Joseph was far from home. He was far from everything familiar, in a strange land with strange people. But God was with him. God blessed the work Joseph did. He was respected and put into a good position. But one day, Potiphar's wife tried to convince Joseph to do something wrong, something that would go against God and betray the trust he had with Potiphar. When Joseph refused, Potiphar's wife accused him of it anyway. She told the guards and had him thrown into prison. Joseph had done nothing wrong, but his life now seemed to get worse. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Just like with Potiphar, Joseph didn't have a bitter attitude, he didn't sulk, he was trustworthy, he showed he was responsible and diligent, and the prison guard allowed him to be in charge of the prisoners. Again, God was opening up an opportunity for Joseph. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king of Egypt. So the baker and the butler of the pharaoh had done something wrong that offended the pharaoh. Maybe they spilled his food, maybe they sneezed on him, Maybe one of them had tried to hurt the pharaoh and he threw them both in prison until he found out who. For some reason, they made him mad and they were now in prison. After some time, they had a disturbing dream. Each of them had a dream. When Joseph came into their cell to check on them, he saw it on their faces and asked them about it. The butler told his dream to Joseph how he saw grapes and squeezed them into the pharaoh's cup and then delivered that cup to the pharaoh. Joseph was a special person. God had not only given him dreams, but had also given him the interpretation to these dreams. The butler's dream meant that he would be restored to his old job. The pharaoh would take him out of prison and return him to his service. The baker heard about the good report that the butler got, and so he told his dream to Joseph. In his dream, he was carrying three baskets of bread on his head, and the birds came and started eating the bread in the topmost basket. This time, Joseph did not have a cheerful message for him. Instead, his dream meant that he would be executed. Three days later, Joseph's interpretation came true. The butler was returned to his service to the pharaoh, and the baker met his end. But Joseph remained in prison, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river, and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine, so Pharaoh awoke. Pharaoh had a dream one night, a disturbing dream, where seven cows, healthy and fat, were grazing by the river, and then seven sickly and thin cows came up out of the river and devoured the seven healthy cows but they remained just as sickly as before. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk rank and good, and behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them, and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then Pharaoh had a second dream. After he fell back asleep, he dreamed of seven ears of corn that stood tall and healthy, but then seven ears of thin and withered corn grew up after it and devoured it, but remained just as thin as sickly as before. Pharaoh called the wise men after his second dream, and he asked them what his dreams meant, but none of them had power to interpret dreams. The butler, after hearing about Pharaoh's concerns, 
recommended Joseph. He finally remembered two years later that man in the prison who had given him a good message. So the Pharaoh called for Joseph. He called for him to be cleaned up, brought out of the prison, and set before him. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Joseph gave full credit to God. He made sure Pharaoh didn't assume this was all Joseph's power. Joseph didn't have power to interpret dreams. God gave him the interpretations. Joseph was just the messenger. The cows and the corn in Pharaoh's dreams meant seven years, or represented seven years. The good and healthy cows and corn represented seven years of plentiful harvest, but after that time would be seven years of harsh famine, either from lack of water or buds that eat crops. Hardly anything would grow, and it would be so bad that the good years would be forgotten. Distressed at this news, Pharaoh asked Joseph, what could he do? Joseph advised the Pharaoh to appoint men to set aside food during the good time, during the good bountiful years, and prepare for the years of famine. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. The Pharaoh was so impressed by Joseph's humility and his wisdom and advice, and he appointed him not only to be in charge of the famine survival program, but to also be in charge of all Egypt second in command only to Pharaoh. Joseph never got bitter, though he did nothing wrong. He was treated unfairly by his brothers, by Potiphar's wife. He remained diligent, faithful, trusting God in whatever situation he found himself. God put Joseph exactly where he needed to be to save an entire nation. God could have done this with anybody, but God wants to use people who follow him, who are faithful and trusting. God will help us get through the difficult times to the blessings he desires to give us.